I want to get into the five reasons why I believe that someone with ADHD can actually be an even more powerful manifester than someone with a more normal brain and not to like create separation or this is better than, you know, and this other person's less than, but just like to give the people who feel like this is a disability or this is like a disempowering thing. I want to show you that it's actually a superpower. So the first thing is the ability, number one, the ability to hyper fixate and hyper focus. So I feel like so many people come, you know, to me when it comes to manifestation as a manifestation teacher or just like complaints that I've heard in general around people having ADHD is the inability to focus, right? Like I have a really hard time focusing and guys, it's actually laughable when I try to clean my house or when I try to do laundry or cook something, I figured out finally why I hate it so much and why I now have a full-time housekeeper and a chef in my home, right? Thankfully, I'm so grateful that I can afford it, so grateful that I can delegate these things. This is the reason why I also have a team on Team MB (laughs) because the amount of time it takes me By the time I pull out a knife from my kitchen drawer to chop a vegetable, I'm thinking about how my drawer is so dirty and so disorganized. And then I start cleaning my drawer and organizing the forks, knives, and spoons and whatever. By the time I finish that, I'm like, wait, there's more dishes in the sink. By the time I put the dishes away in the sink, I'm like, wait, I'm cooking. Hold on. I need this other ingredient. I open my fridge and I go, huh, wait, I'm missing this, 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 and this, and whatever. And then I'm like, okay, I need to go and Instacart this immediately. I go on my phone and I put groceries into my Instacart app. By the time I do that, I get lost on social media. Somehow I'm on Instagram now. Now I'm scrolling. Now I'm like, ooh, that recipe looks awesome. Let me try cooking that instead. Then I'm like, hold on a second. I was cooking this ground beef for example. Um, Let me get back to the ground beef that I was originally making. Okay, what's my next ingredient? By the time I go to my refrigerator again, I notice something that's out of place on my dining room table by the time. (laughs) So you guys can see how my brain functions, right? But the ability to hyper-focus and hyper-fixate is the ability to focus on something with intensity for a really, really long time. So have we ever considered that maybe, just maybe, the things that we are so distracted by, the things that aren't sticking in our brains are the things that are not actually supposed to be there. Like we're not actually supposed to engage with it. This is not in alignment with our zone of genius. I think very often to how when I was in pre-med classes, when I was in biology, when I was in chemistry, when I was in physics, I remember so often being like, I don't know what the fuck these professors are saying. I can't focus on what they're saying for the life of me. Like I just, it just isn't processing in my brain. And then I discovered online business and selling shakes online and selling workout programs online on Facebook and online marketing. And I hyper fixated like you wouldn't believe on that. And I spent so much time and energy and resources just diving in and diving in and diving in and diving in and diving in. And And I could have judged myself and been like, no, Catherine, you're supposed to become a doctor, right? You're not supposed to be distracted by this online business thing. You're supposed to become a doctor. Like maybe just maybe I wasn't supposed to become a doctor. And that's why I couldn't actually focus on my classes that had to do with becoming a doctor and why I spent so much free time learning how to build an online business. And at the same time, also hyper-focusing and hyper-fixating on manifestation and law of attraction and personal development. I could listen to personal development eight hours a day every single day, right? So it's not this inability to focus per se. I think that this is a massive gift because our intuition is always leading us into the things that naturally align with us and align with our soul purpose and align with our soul destiny. And the things that naturally light us up are the things that we can then hyper-focus and hyper-fixate on. And those are the things that are actually in alignment with where we want to go and actually in alignment with our manifestations. So have we ever considered that? And I think about that a lot. 
when people tell me, oh, I can't focus, it's like maybe you're not supposed to be focusing on that thing in the first place. Maybe you can't focus in the manifestation process on a particular desire because you don't actually want it. So really diving into, do you actually want it or do you just think that you want it or that you should want it, right? I just truly believe the things that you don't want to focus on just aren't worth your time. And maybe you can't stick with a manifestation tool like writing down your desires 55 times a day in a row for like 17 days straight, you know, those rituals that some people get really into, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just, it's not for everyone. Not every tool is for everyone. Maybe meditation's not for you. You can't sit still in meditation. Maybe meditation's not for you. Maybe you have a hard time visualizing. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe there's a different way that you can explore how visualization works for you and do it with that. For me, visualization, actually, even though I am very visual, For me, I need to play a song to keep me on track with visualization. So that's why I love visualizing to music. I figured out my tools. The tools that are actually meant for me are the ones that I genuinely enjoy and am able to stick with for a particular time. So that's all a sign and things that you want to pay attention to. And this is actually what makes you a better manifester because once you get in locked in on a desire or an area of life or a version of reality that you want to manifest, like you are going to take it to the fucking end and you think that you're going to lack focus. No, baby, you're going to have so much focus. You're going to take it to the end. You're going to have so much more energy for it than you can ever imagine. And you're going to manifest that thing in the end. And then delegation is your superpower. So learning to delegate the rest of the things in your life as much as you possibly can or using tools to help you with management. Like there's a reason why, again, I have a team. I have a chef. I have a housekeeper is because my goodness, (laughs) my priorities are my son, my husband and my like creative work. So recording these podcasts and writing content and posting online and making courses and selling courses like that's my zone of genius. So if I get lost in all these other tasks, then I wouldn't be as successful in my business. The next thing is we are. So this is number two. We are creative and intuitive as fuck. Okay. so my mom always heard from my teachers. Of course, she daydreams too much. She spends way too much time in the clouds. She spends way too much time in her imagination. Well, that's a fucking gift. And that has a lot to do with manifestation. Why? First of all, intuition is key in manifestation because we're always being guided towards our manifestation with intuition. I don't know if you know this, but at any moment in time, our subconscious mind, our subconscious brain is processing what I think it's like two point something billion bits per second. And our conscious mind can only filter about 40 bits per second, bits of information. With people who are neurodivergent or people who have ADHD, we can actually process more. So we have the ability to process more information, to filter through more information than a neurotypical person, which means that we are more likely to hear our intuition better than others. And we can actually identify more patterns. So ha 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 on me. You know, when I always tell you guys, one of my gifts is recognizing patterns. I'm really good at recognizing patterns. Well, that's starting to make sense now because that is very common amongst neurodivergent people. So we can identify more patterns and we have this superb pattern recognition ability, which makes identifying things that are out of the ordinary so much easier. So we can get locked into someone's like body language. So we can literally see in you know, our conscious minds are processing that you know, this person's saying one thing, but their body language is saying something else and something feels off. And my intuition's telling me not to work with this person or not to get in a relationship with this person or uh, vice versa. 
Maybe it's like my intuition's telling me, like, even though they're not perfect on paper and there's some missing things, you know, in terms of like life partners, maybe there are some characteristics that I would have liked instead or whatever. For some reason, my intuition's telling me that this is a yes. Like, this is my partner. This is my person. This is my husband. This is my wife, et cetera, et cetera. You end up listening to your intuition and they end up becoming, you know, your soulmate, the love of your life. You realize like, oh my God, thank God I listened to my intuition. So we actually have more of that. It's not like we're more intuitive in the sense that like some people are intuitive and some people are not. I think that everyone's intuitive, but I think that we get that information faster. We can be incredibly psychic. We can be incredibly spiritual. We're just very connected to that spiritual domain. And that's a fucking superpower. Now, in terms of creativity, like the ability to see solutions where other people just see problems, I don't even have to explain to you why that's a superpower. That just is a superpower. We're incredibly innovative. Um, We don't take no for an answer. We can figure anything out. There's no telling us that something is impossible. If it's important to us, we will figure it out. And again, that bleeds right into hyper-focus, hyper-fixation. And then we make incredible artists Um, we're incredible visionaries and we're big picture thinkers, which this is very helpful, especially when, you know, some people have a tendency to get really stuck in the how of how something's going to manifest and all the little details. And the thing is, is that the details and the how is not your job in the first place. So what a fucking benefit to forget about all the details. I forget details all the time. I'm a very big picture person. I'm a very big picture thinker. And so that is great because in manifestation, that's actually very helpful for me. Number three can be seen as a negative, but also as a positive. And I'll explain in just a second why. Staying calm in chaos in high stress environments is a superpower of ours. Um, And that's because we're more adaptable to life's uncertainties and changes. So I don't know if you notice, but life can be uncertain right? The external circumstances that are outside of our control can feel chaotic sometimes. There's crazy shit happening in the world. And people who have ADHD are able to stay more calm in chaos than people who are more neurotypical. The reason being, there's a scientific reason, and I'm going to explain it, is because we have more theta wavelengths than the average person. The average person has more beta wavelengths. We have more theta wavelengths. Now, beta helps with concentration. So that's like a good thing for those people. But theta, what theta is, is essentially linked to heightened creativity. It's linked to heightened intuition. It is the wavelength of the subconscious mind. In fact, when we are being hypnotized, our brain goes into the theta wavelength state. In the theta wavelength state, you are more programmable. Now, that can be negative, of course, but in a positive sense, when we want to reprogram our brains, we actually have an easier time than someone who's neurotypical because our brains are already in the more hypnotic state, which is why we spend more time in the clouds. And so the affirmations that we tell ourselves and the stories that we tell ourselves and the things that we do to program our brains actually work faster for us and we have an easier time with it than someone who has less theta wavelengths. So theta is associated with relaxation. So we're more relaxed in chaos, making us more adaptable to life's uncertainties. So when things fall apart or, you know, they fall apart before they fall back together, which happens all the fucking time in the manifestation process, right? You got to remove the old car out of your garage before you park your new car. And that uncertainty when the old car leaves before the new car comes in, that little gap that we all freak out in, for whatever reason, those theta wavelengths help us stay in a more calm, relaxed state. And the more calm and relaxed you are, the more your nervous system is regulated in those circumstances, in those instances, the more you are likely to manifest positive outcomes. A lot of people can fuck this shit up because when life starts to fall apart, they get really stressed out. They go into hypervigilance. They go into a free state. They go into a fight state. They go into a flight state. Their nervous system gets so dysregulated that then that affects their vibration. And when the new thing comes in to replace the old thing, like the new foundation comes to replace the old foundation, the old reality, we can fuck shit up if we're not calm in the presence of that. So whoop-de-doo, 
a great benefit to being neurodivergent is that you're more likely to stay calm, which is great. I already said this, but more theta wavelengths, again, I have notes in front of me, uh, can program ourselves much easier. So I just wanted to say that again, because I think that that needs to be used to our advantage. Uh, Number four, again, this can be looked at as a negative, but it's also a huge positive. We're going to go with the positive outlook. Higher risk tolerance is a symptom of having ADHD. So how I see this as a good thing is we are more likely to go after what we want and be courageous about it. So for whatever reason I don't remember right now, people with ADHD have higher risk tolerance. Now that can manifest in addictions, that can manifest in gambling, that can manifest in like doing crazy shit and putting our lives at risk. Yes, of course, there is that extreme, not the best uh, thing, you know, but think about it in the positive sense. Manifestation is all about bringing the unseen into the scene. It's about having faith in what hasn't happened yet. It's about taking action on something where you literally have no proof on whether or not it's going to succeed, okay? Someone with a lower risk tolerance is less likely to take action purely based on faith on the unseen. And someone who has a higher risk tolerance is more likely to be like, fuck it, I'm diving in. And I find throughout my lifetime, especially when I decided to go all in on manifestation, for whatever reason, I felt very comfortable with the chaos of it all makes sense now. And I just said, fuck it. Like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I'm already living on my grandma's couch. I'm already at the lowest point that I believe that I can get to, which is living with my grandma in her living room on her couch, feeling like a sore loser and not having any clue what's going to happen of my life. I felt like that was already the worst case scenario. So, oh my God, it's only, it can only get better from here. Because if I fail, I can just come back to my grandma's couch, right? And so that gave me the courage. My higher risk tolerance allows me to constantly leap, take leaps of faith that have served me time and time and time and time again. And, you know, they say the the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. And I truly believe it. And if bigger risks don't feel risky to you, it's only going to make the act of acting on faith that much easier for you. Number five, we're extremely fast learners. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but I'll make this my last for now for the sake of time. We're extremely fast learners. So when we're excited to learn something, we go fucking deep. We become masters at things. And this is really helpful in the manifestation process because you know, we're extremely fast processors. So, and this is what my mom would always tell me, like, Catherine, you're an extremely fast processor. So I always believe that about myself. And I feel like that's what helped me learn so quickly and just be able to just like get what I need and then take it and run with it. I'm able to take skill sets and tools and apply them to my life immediately and just run with them. Be like, oh, this works for me. No, this doesn't. Like this works for me. Yes, I'm going to take it and go. This doesn't work for me. I'm going to, you know, leave it. It's not, it's not for me. And any skill set or tool that we need to pick up on along the way to manifesting our goals. So let's say your dream career requires you to pick up on some tools and skill sets and knowledge. Guess what? You can really condense time. You can really collapse timelines because you're just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Got it. Learned it. Thank you. Bye. And you're just really good at absorbing the knowledge quickly. 